Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Oh man, I could use that, bro. Who couldn't? <laughs> Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Ooh, I like that tagline. Chew, Chew it, it and, and do, do it. it. Yeah. Wow. That's that, pretty good. That's that's the hook. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code Tacoma at checkout. You just pay five bucks for shipping. Bluechew.com. Promo code Tacoma. T A L K O M A. Thanks, Blue Chew. Happy sex, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Tacoma FD. Great job, Jason Akana. Thank you, Jason Akana, for our theme song. So good. Tacoma FD. Welcome uh, back, Lemmy. Thank you very much. Look at this uh, set. These guys helped us set up. I, lo I love I this set. Look at this. Let's let's take a little walk down memory lane here. Yeah. We've got uh, the uh, the pinata. That's Hispanic Terry McConkey. Yeah. I, I like to think, you know, specifically it's Colombian because he's got a little bit of a uh, Pablo Escobar thing. Sure. Uh, and I was and thinking, you got pastrami sandwiches inside. Oh, that. see, I was going to play a drinking game. Like, can you guess uh, what's in that pinata's mm -hmm. belly? Okay. Um, yeah. What else? We got our we got our, our pickleball uh, sure. bobblehead characters. Sure. We got Pipey. We got posters. We got Joey Pants behind you. Season four. Yeah. There's Joey Pants, my father on the show. This is the show. Don't tell though. You know what I mean? Right, like they know it. They know. They can see it. So you think we should do it like we got this, <laughs> we got this. But you know, something like Pipey, like Pipey, and Pipey's wearing his COVID mask because sure. uh, when we were filming this episode, it was, you know, prime. Oh, he had a mask, right? I forgot about that. Yeah, he had a mask. Okay. Um, and here's our season four poster, and you guys have all just watched the first episode of Tacoma FD season four. I hope they watched it. Do you think people are tuning in to this without watching that? Well, they might, but they'll get some laughs out of it, but you're really going to enjoy it if... You watch the episode. That would be an alternative way to watch a television Watch this show. first and then go backwards? Yeah, do the after show first. Well, my mom always used to say that. She used to say, I want to watch the after show first so I know all the backstory before I watch. And I try to explain it. You can't, you can't do it that way because then it ruins the thing. Yeah. But people like the backstory. Yeah. But what you want to do is you want to watch the episode, then hear the story behind it, then go back and watch it again. Double watch. Yeah. I like that. A double watcher. Okay. All right. Well, it's finally back on the air, though. It is back in the air. Thank God, it's been a while. And we left, you know, we left- Quite a cliffhanger. I mean, honestly, has there ever been a better cliffhanger? <laughs> has there ever been a- And it took a while. We made a movie in the meantime. Oh, what movie did we make? We made a movie called Quasi. It's on Hulu. Yeah. Uh, but what happened was we finished shooting. They were kind of like, there's been a lot of corporate turmoil. There was a little bit of, a, of, a, of an issue about getting renewed. And so we decided to make a movie. So we made a movie. Mm -hmm. And then we got renewed. Uh -huh. Then there was more corporate turmoil. Yeah. So then um, it took a while. We finished the whole thing, and then they didn't tell us when we were going to air. So we waited, waited, waited for a while. They got their shit together. They launched Max, mm -hmm. and they got their network back up and running. Yeah. And now here we are. Season four. Season four. That's pretty good. We've done 49 episodes of Tacoma FD. 50. 50? We shot the pilot twice. Oh, you're right. We did shoot the pilot twice. Right. I stand corrected. I know. Uh, but then the other thing was, after season two, we mm. did this show. People yeah. remember we did Talk Coma. Yeah. And we did it on the network. It was a COVID show. Yeah. It was a pandemic show. Yeah. And uh, after season three, we asked them if we could do it again. They said no. <laughs> right. Even though, even though it did very, very it did well very for well. them. It did very well. And they said, well, you know what? After season four, we're going to do it ourselves. Well, by the way, let's tell a story about how Talk Coma FD got on the air. COVID happened. Yep. And in the space of 24 hours, uh, TNT, TBS, True TV lost the NCAA college basketball tournament. Yeah, that's they, huge. They lost NBA. March Madness. That's called March Madness. Yeah. They lost uh, Major League Baseball. Yeah. They lost the Basketball. NBA playoffs. Yeah. And we were on the phone with them and uh, they said, we just got, I mean, look, COVID was a bigger <laughs> deal, but they were like, in the terms of the way it affects us, sure. we just lost all our programming. Right. And we had been talking about this for a while. We said, well, you've got an idea for you. How about... Uh, uh, an after show like Talking Dead called Talk Homa FD. Now, listen, let me just tell you something. This is on the phone. I'm the one who said that, and Kevin rolled his eyes at me. I did not roll, out, roll he, my eyes. That's he, bullshit. He rolled his eyes at me, and then- All the corporate executives laughed at us. Yeah. On the phone, they laughed at us. They did. But then okay. we split, and Kevin rolled his eyes at me. And uh, I'm in your camp, pal. It, I, I know. And we split up then to go do some editing. Yeah. And in that time when I was driving, I got a, a phone call. Right. From, from the prez. From the prez. And yeah. he said, were you serious about that Tacoma FD yeah. idea? And, and I said, yeah, absolutely. He's like, you got a green light. We're going to do it. <laughs> I was like, what? And I, I strutted into the editing studio. I was like, what up, Heffernan? <laughs> yeah. And we made Tacoma FD. I know. And it did very well for them. Very well. But they did not renew it the following no. season. No. Even though the fans- Fuck them. We said we do it ourselves. Fuck the fans? No, fuck the network. Oh, Kevin Heffernan. Fuck the network? Fuck the network. <laughs> 
I don't know it's even worse. What are you crazy? Um, uh, they didn't want to do it, so we said we'll do it. Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. We're doing it so now. for the next thirteen weeks. We're going to make a companion piece to each episode. We're going to have guests on. We're going to have clips and reels and bloopers. We're going to tell stories. We're going to do bloopers. Yeah. Gag reels? Bloopers? We're doing bloopers? Yeah. Now you sound like you're from Boston. We doing bloopers? Hey, hey, Joe. You doing bloopers? Bloopers. Bloopers. Um, Okay. So coming back, though, to this season, biggest issue, how do you do the cliffhanger? Like, what do we do? Uh, Right. Right? When we left the the last season, we burned our station down. Really? Yeah, I said that. Where do you go? Yeah. Why are you breaking my balls? We, because you broke mine. Oh, God. Is this the way it's br- going to be? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, God. It is. Okay. Because I already said that. Okay. And you got mad at me about it, and now All you're right. doing it. All right. I'm sorry. But I'm me sorry. too. Let's, let's. Do you know what else I like? Oh, your hands are nice and wet. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Mm. Megan up. Mm. These are the pickleball guys. Can no, I get, get, get pipe. No, Can no, I get no, it on no that? snowmen. No snowmen. I got a carrot for a nose. <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, by the way, one other thing. We've got uh, Axel here, our, uh, okay. uh, Tacoma, our Tacoma created uh, firefighter. They were saying this, this is our sidekick or something? Is that what it is? Yeah. The axe? Yeah. Tell the story of this axe. Uh, that axe was a gift from the real Tacoma fire department. Yeah. Uh, firefighter Kelly McCown. Uh, create he bejazzled it's bejazzled that axe uh, himself and you can see it if you watch the show you'll see it hung over the right it's hung up in the break room yeah and, and there this, it is this thing has been stolen by uh by meth heads before we're like meth heads. it was well meth heads always break into our uh oh that's true set. that's true after every season yeah that after one season they made a sex swing in there after season, Did we tell that ever tell that story let's tell the story uh, that uh you know we have our standing set and it's just in some warehouse and we got the call after uh, in the off season two years ago that a bunch of guys broke in or guys and girls broke in mm-hmm. and uh, they were kind of like a younger homeless crowd in the area Mess. and they were having sex parties yeah. in our set and they built a sex swing yep. in the middle of our set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the cops came and they had to, you know, they had to chase these guys out and, you know, whatever, but people, they were, they were fucking in some sort of swing. <laughs> I have Which never, I guess is a thing. Is that a thing? You've never said the word fucking in regard to sex before. Really? Yeah. Okay, sorry. They were making love, but I'm sure they were not making love. Right. Uh, in a sex swing. Uh, and they also <laughs> they also had like homemade kind of like uh, like uh, restraints. Yeah. And also, uh, I don't know if you remember this, but like we had a, bu- a lot of wardrobe boxes there. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the uniforms. And, stuff. and they unpacked a, a box of wedding dresses. Yes. And they hung wedding dresses everywhere. Ugh. It was real weird God, shit. God, that's but, fucking you weird. You know, but that's meth so for you. fucking weird. That's meth for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Okay, anyway. Okay, whatever. Okay, so the the writer's room, the biggest thing uh, uh, after, you know, before we started season four was to figure out how to get out of that cliffhanger. Right. And whatever, we grew up on TV and there's there's always a cliffhanger and who shot JR, JR right? The big, that was a big thing where it was like a dream you know, like where, uh, I don't know if anyone will remember this, you know, who watches Dallas. You're referring to something that happened, yeah, you know, like 45 knows of, years ago. But the way they did it, it was like the biggest cliffhanger in the history of television. And then the next uh, season, the first episode was like, the, it was all a dream. And the guy like, you know, wakes up and it was all fake, you know? Yeah. And so we definitely wanted to try that. <laughs> but people thought that would be a little unsatisfying. Well, because the, the, the first thing we were like in the writer's room, we were like, well, I mean, logically, uh, Terry did go off to Pirate World. Should we just start at Pirate World and, and make them yeah. all firefighters at Pirate World? And we we're like, no, 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 no. And, you know, we would come up with, like, we had we had one thing, remember, where it was like, they we were going to, you were going to assemble the team back together. Yeah, yeah, like Magnificent Seven or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, yeah. like, my character, I had, the backstory was that I had somehow uh, become uh, Reba McIntyre's. <laughs> Kept, sex slave in a sex man. swing? Yeah, I kept men, and she had me on her yacht. That'd be fucking great if you had a sex swing with Reba McIntyre. I know, but like- On her yacht. But that was one of the ones where we put our producer's hat on, and we're I'd like- i turn that down. We can't- uh, I'd probably shut that down. You definitely shot that down. Uh, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, Reba McIntyre's going to see was this. A, and, that, but that was a viable option, that you were going to be Reba McIntyre's sa- sex toy on her yacht? Is that what it was going to be? Y- you know, Kev- I had uh, I've had sex with Reba McIntyre in real I know, life. I know we were just telling these guys a story, right? Okay, so tell not in real life. Tell the story though. Okay, so tell I the story. so I had a sex dream about Reba, Reba McIntyre many years ago. Many years ago, and right. it was great. Right, it was great. She was like, "Oh, Steve, you are so sexually generous," and 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 oh yes, yeah, just oh you just you know sh- shit on my face. Okay, let me like, shit on your face. No, not like, shit. Shit on my face. Sit. Sh- shit, like you know, shit, sh- shit, shit down. Face, right. right, right. But I had a I had a real uh, sex dream about Reba McIntyre, and right. I woke up and it was like so vivid, and I started to I came to the realization that like when you have 
a sex dream about somebody, it's it really is like you had sex with them in real life because like in in real life you have sex with somebody. Right, and it's a memory. And then afterwards, what is it? Yeah, right. it's just in your mind. Right, right, right. And if you have sex with somebody in a dream, it's a memory. What is right. it? It's in your mind. Right. It's the same thing. So you have, I actually, when I have a so sex dream have somebody- So you have had sex with Reba McIntyre. I have had sex with Reba McIntyre. And, and as a result, you've become sexually attracted to her. Because that happens. Because of that dream. Because that happens. I know that. I know that. You know, she's got her, her nice little cat mouth. And uh, what did I- Name one Reba McIntyre song. Uh, Name one. When I, when I see you smile. That's not a Reba McIntyre song. Uh, uh, every Rose. Does anyone know? Do you guys know a Reba McIntyre song? Anybody know one? Name one. No, uh, lo- Lonely Road. Is that really one? My Heart Beats. See, I would even My know. Heart Beats for You. These guys can check it out for, I don't know. I don't think that's it either. Country Gal. The, oh, you know one. Uh, do they all have Country S's in them because of, she, because of the lateral lisp? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know she's got a song called Country Gal. Like, country Gal? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You want some Reba songs? I got some Reba, Reba songs. We got well, get, Reba? Give, give can, me a Reba song. Can we... Are we loud? What angel in your arms? Oh fuck yeah! Angel in your arms. Angel in your arms. Angel in your arms. I don't want to be the one night stand. Not, I don't want to be, be the one, one. night stand. And oh. Is that in parentheses? Is night stand in parentheses? That's a great pun. I don't want to be the. I one. don't want to be your one. The one night stand in parentheses. No dot dot dot. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then of course uh, this one is. You're actually right. It's called Country Gal. Oh, you knew that though, right? No, I had no idea. Maybe that was the song that you guys were making love to. Isn't it amazing how the human brain it works? It's amazing. Like, like I probably know. heard, I registered that right, someplace. Right, 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 right. And that's the song you're making love to, and that, that's now your favorite song. It is. So like when I hear uh, country bro. gal, oh boy. <laughs> oh, watch out. <laughs> country gal makes me horny. Oh, Jesus. Okay, anyway, okay. that was one of the okay. alternate uh, That was an alternate possibilities. Thing, right? we but that a, didn't, we, you know, and we went down this whole road, and we had people pitching us, like uh, Cousin Bill, who we'll talk about, Crew members, like my my pool guy, everyone's got a fucking idea about how you're going to come out of this season. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? My kids, too. Yeah. My kids, too. Like, like my, you people know. emailed, like, elaborate, here's what you should do. Yeah. You know, Wolf Boykins is working in a blah, 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 you know, and they get this whole thing, you know? And yeah. you're like, okay, take it easy now. Pop. No, I know I know that, like, like we had one for Ike Crystal that he was, like, in the thunder from down under, like this, <laughs> the strippers, the Australian strippers in- uh, I'd like to see that. In Las Vegas. Me too. Yeah, bro. And uh, like I said, my son, who was in the, the Rise of the Machines episode in season three, who, who finds Snack Butt, yeah. his pitch was like, I think it should be, and, and your son, Buck, who's yeah, been yeah, in many yeah, episodes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he said, I think it should be me and Buck and we live with uh, Snackathon. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> every, every pitch was kind of self serving. Yeah. Like, go back to fucking elementary school, kid. Yeah. And, and don't come back to me until you know how to write. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's the way you treat him. That's the way I am yeah. as I a father. It. I get it. Yeah. Um, so we had all this uh, this hurdle of coming out, and then what we decided is just put us in Pirate World. Bingo. Right. But then the, the whole thing is, like, we don't have a budget, so, like, where, where are you going to shoot Pirate World? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, and we're going to go fucking Disneyland? Yeah. No. Uh, you know? No. Uh, I don't know. I mean, but we could. But you they're could. just expensive. So we went and we shot this place in La Mirada. It was called Splash World or Splash or something like that. Yeah. Splash. And, Splash and World. they already had like pirate shit there. Yeah. It was a pirate themed. Like they had like the, the crow's nest up there. That's yeah. where like the, you know, guys go up and go like, ahoy, land yeah. ho. Yeah. And, and they, they had, had like big ships and stuff. And skulls and crossbones. You know what they had though, which people get furious about? Palm trees. Yeah. Like whenever we show a palm tree, in Tacoma FD, people get fucking furious about it. Yeah. There are no palm trees in Tacoma. Yeah. But I bet if they had Pirate World in Tacoma, they'd bring some palm trees in. Absolutely. Right? So did we- I would do that. Did we uh, digitally remove any palm trees from there or no? Or were we like, no, it's no, authentic. No, no, we left it. Yeah, it's authentic. It's, it's set dressing like this, like Brian did, right? Speaking of set dressing, you know, yeah. like our production designer, Bianca Ferro, yeah. who did, she did American Vandal. She's the one who drew all the, all the dicks. Right, right. In American in Vandal. In that great Netflix right. series, uh, right. American Vandal. Right, right, right. I'm telling you, there's like that first, when we pan down. Yeah. Crane shot, buddy. The crane shot. Crane shot. Sorry buddy. about that. Cut to crane shot. Also, yeah, crane you don't, shot. you don't pan down. You tilt down. No. And you pan across. Or no. you boom down. You boom down. Yeah. You boom down. Yeah. Yeah. You tilt. Where do, what do you tilt? You, you tilt is like this. Right. Boom is like this. Okay. And you know when-, when you, And pan is like this. And you know when you do- You guys get all that? When you do that together, that's called a compound move. There's a compound move, right? That's you can do move. this, or yeah, that's good. That's shit, you learn some shit. You see that? That's good. Um, okay, so Bianca Farrow- Yeah, but, but I'm pretty sure in that, in that first crane shot coming down, one of the signs uh, for Pirate World has a, a dick in it. Oh, yeah. No, there's, there are hidden dicks in it. Always. And yeah. I'll tell you, people also, um, she also was the designer for Quasi. Yeah, and there are dicks. Which is the movie we made on Hulu. Thing. Yeah. And there are dicks. You can look all over the place. 
you can find dicks in the, the mute, design. The mute flute. The mute flute's got dicks in the design. Look at the stained glass windows. Should we be giving that away? Okay, we'll give it away. Oh, sure, why not? Um, okay, so anyway, we go to Pirate World. We shoot this thing in Pirate World. Yeah. And um, it was uh, we were doing this faux birthday party with a pair, you know, the pair catching fire. And it was actually my birthday on that day. Correct. And um, I don't, I don't think we've ever shot because we usually don't shoot in the summer. I don't think we've ever shot when it's my birthday. We've only shot. We when always it's my shoot birthday. when it's your birthday. Yeah. We we shot quasi on my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Never shoot it in my brain. I don't, I don't like it one bit. No. And, and yeah, well, f- so a couple things. First of all, your cake. Let's talk about your cake. The, the steak cake? Yeah. So that like that, they came to me and they were like, what does Kevin like? <laughs> and I was like, not much. You want another treat? Not much. He doesn't like anything. And they're like, but we're going to celebrate. I'm like, oh, we're definitely celebrating. Yeah. Because every time it's my birthday, yeah. there's a big celebration and True. you're like, speech, speech. <laughs> and I'm always like, I don't know what to say. Like, you know, like, and I, right. and I give a lame speech and I feel shitty about it for the rest of the day. And there's a cake. And it was very nice. It's very nice. But I was like, no, we're, we're blowing it out. I was like, he doesn't really like cake, though. Like, he doesn't like sweets. It hurts mm-hmm. his teeth. Mm-hmm. He's got mm-hmm. sensitive teeth. I like salt. Yeah. I was like, I like it salty. But let's get him a cake anyway, and let's make <laughs> it a steak. And they, they made a great steak. Cake. It, was a, it was a gigantic steak cake. It's, it's ridiculous. There it is. It's actually the biggest cake I've ever... I mean, look at that. And yeah. the biggest steak I've ever seen. I know. But the thing was, um, um, you know, everyone... I got there on the set, and it was... Uh, everyone wanted to sing happy birthday and all that shit. And, and it was a little bit of a drive, and I was fucking late. I was really late. Yeah. And I'm the director. Yeah. And I, the director should never be late. You were like 45 minutes late. Yeah, but you want to know what happened? It's a, it's a, it's a comical what happened to me. Okay. So um, I'm driving to that place, and you know, ways, you know, you file your ways, and sometimes they'll send you some places where you don't necessarily want to go. So they tell me this one place is like 10, this one direction is 10 minutes faster. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, okay, I'm so late, I got to get there. And so I get to, I go in that thing, and then all of a sudden I come to this intersection, and it's bing, bing. And the gate coming down, it's like a fucking movie. It's the tr- freight train. Mm-hmm. Like, I am stuck at a freight train. And I'm talking about, like, one of these 20-minute freight trains. Seen them. Like, it's cliche comical. I'm familiar. Yeah. And I'm sitting there stewing in this fucking like, train. Like, one of those uh, freight trains with, like, 10 locomotives. Because that's how many cars, they're pulling, like, yeah. 200 cars. Like I, and I, I was like, oh, fuck. And I tried to, like, leave and go another way, and you come to another intersection, and then it's the same train. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was terrible. And I got in there, finally, and yeah, I was literally, like, a half an hour late, and I was red and furious, and I was ready to apologize, and I walk on and everyone's standing there waiting for me. Yeah. And then they start singing happy birthday to me. Like, yeah. 100 people singing happy birthday to me. And I was, I was red faced, road raged. Right now, here's um, the thing, and we, I think we also sl- <laughs> slow clapped you too. <laughs> totally slow clapped because I don't like being late. I don't like. Well, you'll say I like being late in, in life. I don't like being late in the shooting. Well, I'm no, rarely, I'm never late when we shoot. And I will say that the most enraged I've ever seen mm-hmm. you in your life is when you're stuck in traffic. Yeah, that's true. And then, then you become a danger to everyone around <laughs> you, like people in the car with you, people <laughs> around you. Sure. But, and I told, I, I was like, okay, this motherfucker yeah. is, he would give me such a hard time. We're going to slow clap him and I then would. we're going to fucking happy birthday him. Right. And people were scared. Like, people were like, we can't do that. He's the boss. I'm like, I'm the fucking boss, too. And we're going to do it. And who cares how mad he's going to be? But I was, like, kind of scared, too. Cause, sure. Because. I came in hot, though. Yeah. But what you, can you do? If 100 people are saying happy birthday, what can you do? You can't stay hot. No, you can't stay hot. You got to shut that down. Yeah, especially then when, you know, when I'm, like, speech, speech afterwards. But to your credit, you actually, uh, you had a speech prepared. I you, did? Yeah, you knew it was coming. You said, oh, thank you very much. Nothing okay. makes me happier than celebrating my birthday with all of you people. There's no place I'd rather be on my birthday than shooting a birthday party at Pirate World. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Huh. But let me, just tell you, let me just tell you something. It's okay. always excuses with you, a train, a train. There's a, there's you a, think it's a lie? 
You think it's a lie? You think it's a lie? I'm just saying with you, you always got an excuse. Let me tell you something. That's a true story. There's an old saying. It goes like this. It goes, excuses are like assholes. Right. Everyone's got one, and they all stink. <laughs> Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Oh, I love that tagline. That's line. good. You should get a t-shirt of that, man. Uh, Blue Chew... Please come out with those t-shirts. <laughs> Let's get some merch. Wouldn't that be great if Blue Chew had some merch? Chew it and do it. Yeah. And uh, we've got a special deal for the listeners. We do. Uh, if you go and uh, you try Blue Chew, you get it free. When you use our promo code, Talkoma, T-A-L-K-O-M-A. That's T-A-L-K-O-M-A. Talkoma. Mm, that's hot. That's making people hungry. Uh, right? Use a checkout. You pay five bucks for shipping, and um, you get your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for details, safety instructions. You should be a, a sex professor for bluechew.com. You think so? Yeah. I think I would be very, like, uh, rudimentary, very strict. No, but that's okay, because, like, you know, look, we're all their target audience. Right. You know, because everybody wants to be better at sex. Right. Not yeah. me. You, you're, you're content just to be... Yeah, I'm good enough. Regular? Yeah, I'm good enough, bro. All right. Well, when good enough isn't enough, <laughs> BlueChew.com. Thanks for sponsoring our podcast, BlueChew. Greatly appreciated. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Oh, qué bien. Me llamo Steve. ¿Cómo se llama? Oh, Jennifer. Muy linda. Eh, Jennifer, eh, dígame, eh, ¿dónde está la oficina del presidente? ¿Acá o acá? See that? That was Spanish. If you want to learn how to speak another language, What's the best way to learn it? Immersion. Live in a place where the language is spoken. But since that's not really a realistic option for most people who have learning a language on their bucket list, the next best option is with Babbel. Oh, did you hear that sound? That's right. See, one in five people have learning a new language on their bucket list for 2024. And you can do that with Babbel. See, there's that sound again. That is one of my favorite sounds because that sound is the sound of learning. That's right. Babbel uses technology that for just 10 minutes a day will have you starting to speak a new language in just three weeks. And if you can start learning a new language in three weeks, imagine what you can do in a full year. That's right. Because Babbel uses techniques to teach you the language realistically. You can learn how to simply ask for directions or be conversational in restaurants or ask for help without having to use one of those language apps. So. We have a deal for our listeners, okay? It's just a special limited tire deal. Right now, you can get 55% off your Babbel subscription just for our listeners, okay? Go to babbel.com slash talkoma. That's T-A-L-K-O-M-A, okay? So you go to babbel.com slash talkoma, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash T-A-L-K-O-M-A, and you will get 55% off. Rules and restrictions may apply. Okay. With Fable, we cannot promise that it will always be easy, but you'll always be glad you did it and you will be having fun. Okay. And if you want, if you actually want to be in a classroom, they actually have live classroom experiences as well, seven days a week. So go to babble.com slash talkoma, T A L K O M A, get 55% off, 20 day money back guarantee, and listen for this sound. Babble. You know, and I don't, I don't want to harp on, on okay. your tardiness, All right, let's not but I would it. like to mention one thing. Yes. Um, it really warms my heart that you told that whole story with your pen in your hand like this. Because, you know, I think that's something people who watch the original Talk Home at FD will remember, right. that that pen doesn't leave your hand. Sure. You use it to gesture, you use it to write things down, you use sure. it for, for comfort and security. I do. And I have to admit, for me now... It kind of brought me back. It was really? nostalgic. Yeah, it, it's like uh, it's like mother's milk. That pen, seeing you, you know, like putting on a warm slipper. Look at that. Okay. Will you point at me in the right in the face? Listen to me. Oh my God. Listen to me. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking to you. Yes. There you go. Um, okay. The other elephant in the room. Yes. Right. Which you know I like to make a point this way. Yeah. The other elephant in the room uh, is that we were missing somebody this season. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our good buddy, Eugene Cordero. Cordero. Who uh, we love and people love. Mm -hmm. And I, I put some pictures, we can throw some pictures up of, of uh, Eugene. Baby Godzilla. 
Yeah. Baby Godzilla. Or Baby Godzilla. And um, there's a lot of like, where is he and what's going on and blah, blah, blah. Just to say what's going on, what happened was that, um, you know, in, the, in this day of streaming, it used to be like you'd be on a TV show and you're committed to that TV show and they'd shoot it at a certain time and you're on that TV show. Now with the streaming, people are shooting stuff all the time. Yeah, right? there's no such thing as commitment anymore. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and so uh, at the same time we were shooting, uh, Loki, uh, the TV show Loki was shooting and he was uh, uh, also a character on Loki season one and they were shooting season two uh, in London. And so uh, he uh, went and shot Loki. Because uh, he had a double commitment, and they probably paid him way more than we would. And, and like a hundred million people watch <laughs> and, that and show. Way more people watch that show than watch our show. And it's on Disney Plus. And it's and it's Marvel. Anyway, we wish them um, all the best. But anyway, he went and did that. It, there was there was nothing. There was no animosity. There was no like we've hung out with him recently. Yeah, I love him. He's one of my favorite people in the world. Last time I saw him, you know what we did? Yeah, we hugged. Oh yeah, I hugged him multiple times. I, I he's in Quasi. Him. He's in the movie Quasi. I hugged him ten times. Really, I, I had him twelve times. You're a fucking liar. You know, and then, aside from your tardiness, you're also a liar. <laughs> okay, but anyway, just to say it, we're still friends. I love your lists. Um, we're still friends with him. Yeah. And we love him. And, you know, who knows? You know, maybe he come, if he, we get more seasons, maybe he can come back. We'll see. Maybe he took comes yeah. back. Yeah, took comes back. Um, but what we thought, though, and because we are friends and we love him, we put a little joke in in the episode yeah uh with a little kind of low key you know we like puns we're pun guys right everybody knows that what about andy is andy coming back no no definitely not he's working full time for his uncle's carpet company now i thought he didn't love that job no he's in the showroom now and apparently it's pretty low key oh is that what he's looking for something low key hmm. low key's cool so dad what do you say but i don't know we all thought it was you know cute <laughs> <laughs> i think i think you're cute you know what, you know what i hope thanks yeah i think we should make a rule not to wash this part of the table all season long what do you think would happen like i would have like a i want to fingerprints see, i want you know what uh, it's funny i uh, i met with um art modell's son okay art modell the former former owner of the cleveland browns and then the and Baltimore then the ravens, ravens. Yeah. and he had with him their super bowl trophy Ooh. and they had never washed it the lombardi trophy yeah and so wow. the fingerprint of every like the fingerprints of okay. every person in the world who had ever touched that trophy were on it. Uh, you think that's true? Yeah, because it was disgusting. Like there was no shine left on this thing. Okay. It okay. was gross. Yeah. I, I was well, like, he certainly never won it with the Browns. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. There's a, a shot across the bat yeah, all the but people. But with from, the Ravens, he won it, right? You know who he beat? Yeah, the Giants. The New York football Giants. Yeah. Congratulations on a- The New York football Giants. Nice win. Nobody cares about this. No. Anybody any football fans? You're a Patriots fan, probably, right? Yeah, not not a Giants fan. Yeah. Yeah. That's because we beat the <laughs> yeah. beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Two times. Two, two times. times. Sorry, Tom. Two times. Not so terrific two on times. those days. Yeah, Tom Brady. There yeah, you go. Look at us taking shots at Tom Brady. Yeah. You know what's funny? It's like us taking shots at Tom Brady. Like It's worthless. He couldn't give less He could of not shit. care. Like right now. We're a bug in his windshield. Yeah. Like literally, he's got like how many? But like, I don't some, wear Uggs. But he doesn't care about that <laughs> shot either. He made like, millions of dollars off of that thing. That's true. He was, you know. I would wear Uggs if somebody gave them to me. I actually do. <laughs> I do have a pair of Uggs. You do? I have Uggs slippers. I think I've seen them. Yeah. yeah. They're nice and warm. My it's wife cute. gave them to me for Christmas. Cut to picture of you and your Uggs slippers. Yeah. Well, well, next time on. Um, all right. New, ep new uh, topic, Lemmy. Is the uh, sub other subplot in uh, that episode? Yeah, which I love, and that's the reason why you're wearing that shirt. Yeah, right. Is that uh, another thing we wanted to do was have a little fun with my cousin, mm -hmm. cousin Bill Heffernan, uh, who is a firefighter, was a firefighter for 27, 28 years in my hometown of West Haven, Connecticut, and he's been our technical consultant since the beginning. Yeah, and uh, he's a great guy, and he's got great stories, and he's been super helpful with us in, in the authenticity of our show, and that's something that firefighters comment on, mm -hmm. about how authentic it feels. And um, it's a lot of it's just because of him. And so, um, but he really leans into it. Well, a funny thing happened yeah. to Cousin Bill. He came out, and like the first season, like he just came out like a couple times. Yeah. And, but he would... He showed up in like a, a like a convertible Mustang, like a rented <laughs> yeah. Mustang convertible, and yeah. he had Hawaiian uh, shirt and like sunglasses on the top of his head. It was cl somewhat cliche. Would it you say that? It was totally cliche. Yeah. Like he was, he came to Hollywood to be the technical consultant. And he went Hollywood. When they're like, and I loved it. Don't get Hollywood on us. He got right. Hollywood. He did, and I he, loved it. He came Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, like he, he, I mean, he's really leaned into that sure. persona. Sure. And, you know, it's like he'll, he'll wear shorts in the dead of winter and a Hawaiian shirt in the dead <laughs> of winter. And he's, he's put, uh, he's had Hawaiian shirts made up with like my face on it. Right.
Right. And I love that shirt. And he got one with your face on it, yep. which I don't like I as like much. I, I don't like, like that one like as it. much. Okay. The, the other thing I do like about Cousin Bill. Yeah. Bill has really had an arc over yeah. the four seasons. Like I was saying, like the season one, he came out a couple times for a few days each time. Right, right, right. And, and, and made like an appearance in the writer's room. Like, you know, like he showed up for the writer's room one time. Yep. Season two, it was like, okay, he's coming out for a couple weeks. Yeah. Season three, I think he was out like for the whole yeah. time. Yeah. And same with season four. Season and also four, yeah. season one, he'd be like, uh, you know, you can't really do that. Uh, we would fold the hoses this certain way. Yeah. And by season four, he's like, you're not doing that plot line. That doesn't exist in the station. You're not doing it. And he'd, <laughs> and he'd storm off. That's right. And we'd be like, come on. Yeah. It's funny. He'd be like, wouldn't happen. Was, My name is on this show. The guy sitting in the fire department on Thursday night, I'd be watching that show. And then I'm the asshole. And right. we're like, okay, Bill. You're right, you're right, but, Bill. But it's funny. He's, he's like, not on my show. That's not <laughs> happening on my show. It's true. Okay. But it, it, it worked because those firefighters, yeah, they're, it's authentic. But every now and then, like with like a lump in your throat, you'd be like, I'm just going around, Bill. Well, it would also yeah, be like, who's going to go talk to Bill? Yeah. Like, and then just departments, like wardrobe, uh, props. The props always had button heads because props were in charge of all the fire equipment. Right. And it's like, you know, that's not the kind of ladder you should have. That's not the kind of axe you should have. And it was always like, who's going to go tell Bill? Yeah. yeah. But Bill ultimately saves our ass. And like in this episode, it's one of those things like there's the scenes where you and I are trying to take off the SCBAs yeah. Yeah, when we're rescuing the, yeah. the, the actors from, from suffocating. Yeah. You know, like... We still, it's been four years, we still can't yeah. do it. Yeah. Well. And Bill can't. I have a clip of it, of Bill doing it on the set right. when it couldn't work. It's Cousin Bill here, our resident expert. Who's going to figure it out? Yeah. Oh, he just had to spin in it. Yeah. But what we wanted to do, yeah. that scene where we're taking, we wanted to mimic Bill's real life persona, which is like, it's second nature to him. Like, like one of us will be suffocating because the air's running out. And yeah. He comes up, he puts his a donut in his mouth that he's eating. <laughs> his sixth cup of coffee, he holds like in the crook of his arm, and he just and he just does and it. He and he does your air pack and, and frees us. Yeah. And like lifts the heavy tank off you with one hand. And, I know. And us, we still can't do it. But that, but we try to do that scene when we're talking, and we're sure it's like the second nature. That's what editing's for. Yeah. Same thing with this podcast. Yeah. That's what editing to for. make this podcast good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You guys can and laugh track. You guys can put a laugh track in for us. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There it was. That was a laugh track. Can you do it louder? Record that and then just repeat it. <laughs> uh, that'll work. These guys are good. They're very good. These guys are pros. Um, but yeah, so like we decided that would be a funny thing for Eddie Panisi to be doing instead yeah. of having sex with Reba McIntyre on her <laughs> yacht. Something that was much more manageable right. was if he was a technical consultant on one of these like ridiculous. Uh, dramatic firefighter sure. shows that sure. every firefighter in the world hates. We call it Pitts. On our show, we call it Pittsburgh FD Seattle. Right. Which makes no sense. It's a spinoff of Pittsburgh FD. Right. But Seattle. it's Seattle. Yeah. But we've talked to firefighters and, and you know, uh, uh, they do like to make fun of other firefighter shows, uh, uh, especially the ones that are more kind of like dramatic. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, random shit happens that probably couldn't happen in real life, like a meteor in some guy's chest. Well, that's our, our friend, uh, our good friend, uh, Jason Patton from, you know, Firefighter Chronicles and yeah. Fire Department Coffee. He he does the, like these green screen things where he just makes fun of these TV episodes. And one of them was the one, and I've seen the episode where a, a woman gets a meteor through her entire <laughs> chest cavity. It goes th through her. Yeah. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It hits her and then it like, it stays embedded in her chest. Right. And he's like, okay, uh, a meteor would go right through her. Sure. And then also like a guy coming with some like calipers to remove it. Like, cause it's a, it's a red hot meteor. He's like, sure. that would melt. <laughs> She'd be dead. And right. you know, he exposes the, the but we, we decided to, to do that one. Right. And then, uh, which we had a lot of fun with. I think we had a fun with that. And you know, we also the other joke was that we made all the actors Australian, right? Because for some reason, all the actors on TV are Australian these days. Yeah, right. Is that prejudicial against Australians? No, no. Because I mean, the prejudicial part was that we we put out the uh, the casting call for uh, either British or Australian actors. Yeah, it didn't matter which. And all the British actors, I hesitate to say this because this is prejudicial, but all the- all yeah, the, Here goes um, our British audience. Oh, uh, the- uh, Here they go. The, the British people, they were like, oh, oh, the meteor is stuck in her chest cavity. <laughs> and the Aussies are like, yeah, the media is stuck in her chest cavity. And we're right. like, God, the, they're a little, little more grungy. They're tougher, the right. Australians. And so we cast two real Australians, Jade Albany, yeah. James O'Halloran, yeah. and they played the uh, firefighters. Yeah. And the joke was that- 
you know, off camera, they talk of their Australian accents. Yeah. And on camera, they do a, 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 a delicate American accent. Yeah. Which was, you know, we thought it was funny to poke a little fun in that. Well, and the, other thing, the other thing we were doing is we had uh, um, our character uh, Rhonda Shimes. Right. Our spinoff of, of right. Shonda Rhimes. Played by Chandra Thomas, who's one of the writers yeah. in uh, Tacoma FD. Yeah. And also an actor, great actress. And uh, did, a, did a great job, but we were yeah. a little nervous. Yeah. We were like, right, what if we piss off Shonda Rhimes? <laughs> Will we ever work again in this town? Right. Shonda Land, if we would never work in Shonda Land again. Yeah. Again, we're just a bug on her windshield. <laughs> yeah, she, doesn't, she and Tom Brady are fucking, yeah, they're hanging they're out they're at Leva McIntyre's yacht right shit now. about us. <laughs> um, but yeah, and so, the, and then the other thing, the other thing was that, uh, we wanted to show that also being a technical consultant, you just sit around. Right. And, uh, so I had a fat ass in this well, episode. I, I want to ask about that because, you know, I can't remember, thank you. I can't remember when we instituted that part of the thing, but the whole joke was your ass got huge yeah. when you stopped working and became this technical consultant. And then cousin Bill... Yeah. Got very self-conscious that we thought his ass was fat. Right. But it wasn't necessarily connected to Bill. It was just the idea that you sit around all day and your ass gets fat. Because I think that happens to you. Uh, you know, I think that happens to you. Pointing is fucking rude. <laughs> I know I said I wanted one point, but I'm done with the pointing. Uh, but isn't that the, what it was like we were in college? Like when we were in college. And Why are you doing this, bro? We, would sh we shot, like we shoot videos. And, you know, you'd get, I think you put... Was it the freshman 15 maybe you had? or just, As a junior. Yeah. Oh, you were a junior? As a junior and 20. And it, it kind of went to your haunches? It went, like the way it went to your haunches? It went, so I'm a little bit of a buddy person. I'm a, a little fainty fat bottom. Like when I gain right. weight, it comes to my butt first. Right. To me, it goes like neck and gut, not butt, because I don't have a butt. For, for me, the face is the last thing. To, okay. But, but and you go haunches. I go butt... <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, it goes, you know, you know. It, I, I remember though that we've had, you know, we've made fun of you in the past, and oh yeah, well then, well because then also because uh, then it goes to my face eventually, and right. uh, that junior year, I remember I, an alumni came back to to Colgate, and he was like, uh, "Hey, are you Steve Lemmy's brother?" <laughs> Are you still his fat brother? And I, I was like, no, I'm Steve Lemmy. He's like, oh, wow, because your face got so fat. I was like, that's oh, not that's cool not at all. That's not a nice thing to say. But yeah, but it happens. Sure. It happens. And we had some fun with it in this. Because, we did. Um, but, but I didn't know, what I didn't know was like, where do we, it got to the, the point, and people will see the clips and the pictures, where your butt got exponentially huge. Like cartoon big. Yeah. And the question was, how far were we going to go? Oh, you don't mean real life. You mean in No, the, no, I'm talking about in the show. Okay. Because we have pictures. We have pictures of you trying on your yeah, so Kelly prosthetic Kwan. ass. Kelly Kwan, our yeah. wardrober, uh, yeah. and your sister-in-law. That's right. Uh, she, uh, she made a nice big fat prosthetic <laughs> butt for me. But it was too did big. Did you keep it? Uh, I did not. Wouldn't it be funny if you kept it? I, you know, I was thinking about that on the way the over here it? today. I don't know. but you know, like, Was it gelatinous? No. What it was, was it made of? Foam? Hard foam. Okay. But it was funny because, like, what, what started happening was, like, so, you know, it was too big at first, and yeah. the like, jeans wouldn't fit, and, like, the shirt, like, you'll see my shirt is actually slit on the side. Okay. Excuse me, slit on the side. Okay. To fit over the... The ass. The butt. Yeah. And um, we had to, tr like, it, some versions of it were too big, too stupid. I guess so. I, those are the things I feel we, we cut in, those, the big ones. Yeah. The great big shots. Well, possibly. Yeah. But like the one, the one that we wound up with was still big. Gigantic. But what I found was that oh I was- Oh my God, now we're going to get into fight ass, right? I was getting sexually harassed. Really? Well, because I'd be Shut walking and like teamsters and shit were like, I like that ass! <laughs> I like that ass! And I'd be like, okay, okay. Like the, co the COVID uh, specialists were like, woo, I like that ass! Yeah, okay. And like I'd walk- How'd that like, make you feel? Uh, like at first I was like, you know you like it. Yeah. You know you want it. Yeah. And then after a while, I was like, all right, stop commenting on my fucking fat ass. Like, what is it? Like, what is it with this ass? And then I started to feel very beautiful. I was like, I, I got back to the like, yeah. Okay. I do have a, a big ass. Okay. And you can't You're have it. Owning it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the other things uh, we can just run through real quick. We had a great uh, array of guest stars in the show. A lot of them are people who came back. This gentleman here came and joined us. Joe. Pantoliano. Joe Pantoliano. And it's always a pleasure when he joins us. And it's because you think back to all those fucking movies that uh, you watched and he was in and he was so great in, starting back from Risky Business, mm -hmm. and, um, which I watched recently. And uh, he's had, he had like a lot more hair back then. Well, you know? but then, you know, listen, I, like with all due respect to our, our good friend Joey Pants, yeah. 
This season, he showed up looking like dog shit. I, I don't think, I disagree with you. I know that you had a problem with the beard. I liked it. I liked the way it looked. Well, but, but he can't, uh, once it was augmented. I like, guess so. Like he, but he was shooting, so like, he was like Chucky. Do you, do you know why you liked it? Yeah, he, yeah. Was, in, he was in He the, was shooting Chucky. Like, yeah. And he showed up and he's like, I can't shave the beard. I need the beard. Say it like him. I can't shave the beard. Yeah. I need, I, the, I need to have the beard. Yeah, is it okay if I have the beard? You guys don't mind. Don't, I'm not, Steve, no, I'm going to ask Kevin. Yeah. Let me, I'm, hey, I'm, Kev, I'm going to go, go, go ask Kenneth. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm going to yeah. go ask Kenneth. Uh, uh, hey, Ken, is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, Mr. Pantaleone. Right, but I, w- I was like, at least grow a real fucking beard, not that. What, it, what does that mean? Like a, it a, means the reason you like his beard, beard is because you have, like, because that's have, the kind of beard I would grow? Yeah, you have no hair holes in your face, and oh, so, Jesus. like, you that patchy beard that he's got. And like him, you, we have to augment your mustache, too. That's not true. That's not true at all. Look at this mustache. I like his beard. When I see the footage, I like it. He's great. And the nice thing was for Joe also, he's in what, three episodes? Or two episodes? Two episodes. Okay. I mean, he came back for like an extended block of time, you know, where it was in the past, it was like, you know, a day or two here. Yeah. But he was there for, for multiple days, which was fun. What's great is that when he's uh, acting with us, we all we do is rep, we, we reference a movie when we want to inform him on how he should act. Yeah. Can you do the bad boys version? You know? Yeah. Can you do the, the Matrix version? Well, because he's always starts, Joe, in his, uh, as he gets a little bit older, his tendency is to go towards the Sopranos version. Yeah. Like a little angrier. Yeah. And we're like, we don't like that. We like, we like the, the funnier <laughs> one. You know, like the, like that, hey, what, what the fuck, is, what the hell are yeah. you doing? The Midnight Run one. Yes. That's a fucking great movie. That's a great movie. That's a great fucking movie. Yeah. Midnight Run. Go watch Midnight and Run. He's so good in it. Pause this. Go watch yeah, yeah. Midnight and Run. Come back and, and come back. How right. was it? How was it? Really good, right? De Niro? Give me some De Niro. Okay, this is my impression of Robert De Niro on the Planet of the Apes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Milk it. Milk it. Milk it. <laughs> good. There's a lot of monkeys around here. Boom. Punchline. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know the beauty of that was is you're you're kind of midnight run De Niro right now. Totally. Like age. Yeah. Uh, Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. You're midnight run De Niro. He smokes a lot in that movie. He really does. Yeah. He really does. It's part of his character. Yeah. Yeah. Smoker. Um, okay. Joey Pants. Uh, Soder came back. Paul Soder. Paul Soder yep. uh, of Broken Lizard fame came mm-hmm. back as Wolf Boykins, uh, which is a beloved character. People love that character. Yeah. And uh, always a pleasure to have Soder. And people will remember, because we have seen the episode now, or uh, that he is the one who ultimately is responsible for blowing up the station. That's right. And so um, he gets a little comeuppance, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, but the nice thing is that Soder is in our writer's room. So he, he has been a member of our writer's room since episode uh, since season one. And... Um, has written so many great jokes and bits. Mm-hmm. And um, so where, you know, maybe the viewers out there have missed him. We haven't missed him. We see him all the time. I don't miss Paul at all. I don't miss him at all. But I love him. I love you, Paul. <laughs> all right. Jimmy Rash, James Rash, Jim oh, Rash man. joined us again. He played Frank Drake, the uh, CEO of Pirate World. You know what's great about yeah. Jim Rash? Yeah. Uh, other than the fact that he's very funny. Yeah. Is his voice is so unique. Like, I was sitting there the other day, I was watching DuckTales with my kids. Okay. You know, DuckTales. Ooh, uh, ooh. I, I don't, but okay. It's like, they're actually- was No, a, I know what it is. I mean, I just don't want, my kids are older, so I don't watch okay. DuckTales. But the, it was around like in the 80s. Okay. And then they, they have rebooted it now. Okay. More updated thing, but, but he's- uh, Is he? A voice. And you hear his voice. In DuckTales. Also, Bobby yeah. Moynihan is a voice in DuckTales. Oh, really? Our guest star from uh, season two. Okay. Everyone's working, man. Everyone's working. Except you. Yeah. What are you going but uh, you know, you know Rash from Community, and he's also an Oscar winner. He is. He he's an Oscar winner, uh, winning writer. Yeah, for the Descendants. Jim Rash is the guy who people will remember when he won his Oscar was mocking Angelina yeah, Jolie's dress. He did the Angelina dress. Jolie stance. Yeah, the stance it, right in front of her. Yeah, while Faxon was was talking, yeah, doing yeah. the acceptance speech, Jim Rash turned his oh, leg yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. and did the uh, yeah. the Angelina Jolie. That was him. So great, and an old friend, and and uh, he was in the last episode, last season, and he's in the first episode this season. Yeah, and he's fantastic. Fantastically he, he, funny. He was also in a movie with you, Kev. A very good movie. Sky High. Sky High. You guys know Sky High? You guys know Sky High. Great movie. It's a Disney movie. Yeah. Um, all right, Lemmy. Yeah. Uh, I think it's time to get a, bring a guest onto our show. Okay. What do you think about that? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, our first guest, our first guest on this season of Tacoma. I'm excited. This is great. Uh, you know him as Granny Smith. 
Mr. Marcus Henderson, everyone. Mr. Marcus Henderson. Uh, we were just talking about how your uh, your red really matches our set, man. It's a red kind of day today. Yeah, I mean you're looking good, looking good in red. Thanks, man. Is your son Never trying really to get in there? Break. Your son's trying to get on the screen, on camera. I think I think so. He can get I in. Think so. We don't. What are you trying to do? Is he in there? See, Mal say something to America, man. Say something to the world. Actually, now, we're, your kids, let me. You and your kids and Mal, they do karate together, or what is it? Uh, my kids and and Marcus also has a a, a daughter. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. our older kids are together in a group, and our younger kids are together in a group. Oh, nice. Okay. You know what the crazy thing yeah. is? Yeah. Uh, Marcus, do you remember this? Uh, so our kids haven't sparred yet, but uh, last okay. time we were together, Mal, who's six, took on Theo, who's nine, and Mal kicked Theo's ass. <laughs> oh, man. It was, it, it, there's a very clear size difference there. So, you know. And strength. But, like, does that make you guys – you know, uncomfortable when that happens, or does it make you guys feel like, oh it, man? It didn't make him uncomfortable. <laughs> I can guarantee it, you that. It, it it was one of those things where it's like, all right, Mally, like you know, just really work at this, man, to work to get better, and you know, I think that he's a worthy opponent to Theo, man. I think that's. <laughs> but like, were you guys both sitting in the crowd, like side looking at each other? We were next know, to each other. Okay, and were you like, yeah, we were next to each other. At each and other? I noticed that they were they were going at it, and I was like, hey, look. And I, you know, we look over there, and and then I just see Malachi on top of uh, on top of Theo, and it was, and it just kind of stayed like that for a while. Yeah. And, but then the funny thing was, uh, you know, I was right. telling the story is, is that then Mal came off the mat, and yeah. and we were hanging out afterwards where the older kids were going, and and Mal said, "Hey, have you ever seen the TV show Tacoma FD?" And I was, I said, "Yeah," <laughs> and he said, "My dad's on that TV show." I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, mean, I know, I know. <laughs> But I didn't have my mustache, so I so I'll give you know Mal credit. Sure, sure, sure. You're incognito. Yeah, because Marcus was then like, yeah. you know, Steve, also uh, <laughs> He's also been... part of that show. <laughs> yeah, uh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's weird, man. My kids don't watch anything I'm in ever. I mean, because yeah. I just don't think it's appropriate for them yet. But uh, you know, they they so it's like they don't even know what I do really. But do they watch Tacoma or no? You know, that's inappropriate. Uh, they've seen clips. Yeah, yeah. They, you know what I mean? Like every now and again, there are clips, you know what I mean? Like uh, that they've seen before. Yeah. But no, I, I, them, I was at a whole thing where so. in season one, I mean, your kids too, right? I mean, <clears throat> you know, in season one, they were certainly mine were much younger. And uh, yeah, yeah. You know, now they don't give a shit. They watch, you know, they show me rated our movies. You know what I mean? But, you know, at the time. Well, you know. well, ha this is funny because, like, like this is all kind of coming together because, uh, you know, when my kids, like, like I think Addie might be able to watch it because, like, w when uh, Carlos was was Addie's age, he asked, like, after that first season where, where Full Moon Fever, the episode where we go out and all the guys are getting their junk, you know, caught in the yeah, yeah. and everything. He the, the first episode he ever asked to watch again, he said... Daddy, can, can we watch that episode where everyone gets their penises stuck in things? <laughs> <laughs> and, and we watched it again. But then... Uh, and the nice thing is that th that's what our show is reduced to. That was the plot of that episode. Yeah. Everyone gets their penises stuck in things. That's what we do around here. <laughs> that's what but, we do. But then uh, yesterday... We just reflect life, man. That's it. Because isn't that a metaphor for the male existence? <laughs> Come on, man. That's that's just philosophy that we don't even deserve, dude. You're right. I shouldn't disrespect yeah. the male. Not on this show. Um, what uh, you got a chance to watch that first episode? Yeah. The first episode is aired. By the time this airs, the first episode's aired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I watched the first episode last night, man, and it was uh, it was it was definitely. <laughs> It's funny, it's, like, it's it feels ridiculous. like we shot it so long ago, it feels like, you know what I mean? And you watch that stuff. It feels like forever remember. ago. Like, forever ago that we were in Pirate World. <laughs> pirate World. You remember I couldn't say that? I, I remember would, that. Like, the, the R, we were talking about, uh, let me, we were talking about how I have problems with R's. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't say them in certain words. And that was that day where you were going Pirate World. Pirate World? Pirate World? And it was too much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I pulled up a bunch of pictures and clips that are going to show them, but, um, you know, you guys in that pirate ship you know that ridiculous pirate ship they built which is fantastic it was um, beautiful and the wardrobe that you guys had uh the pirate wardrobe i like shout fantastic. out kelly kwan kelly, kelly kwan. kwan and i like the slow motion shot of everyone running towards you know yeah. to save that yeah that was badass yeah it's so I mean, good get, yeah getting off the getting off the the cart and then yeah. grabbing and you the, got the, the blanket thing, yeah. you're running in slow-mo it's so good yeah and, and yeah that I, was good i love i love the fake opening credit sequence yeah you know because yeah with the parrot yeah yeah, because in, in season one, remember in season one we had different opening credit sequences. Yes, yeah. 
Yeah. And this was a nice nod to that. It was like, yeah. I hope that the audience watching is like, wait, what the fuck is yeah. going on here? We're go- now we're in pirate world. What the is that fuck? That Tacoma FD has spun <laughs> off into. The other thing that was great um, was uh, the whole puppet thing. You know, like. Oh man. We should talk about that. Yeah. But the puppet thing was kind of introduced. I think it was like maybe season one. We asked you. Remember, we asked you to come into the writers' room, just because yeah. we wanted to learn about people, you know, and try to put their personal stuff into the show. And I think that's yeah. where the puppet thing came out, right? The puppet thing came out, and then when we shot the original pilot, I went across the street to a um, a thrift store, and I found like a fireman puppet, and I couldn't believe. It. I felt like that was like it was kismet, man. Yeah. So. Uh, it's actually still in that episode where we do the flashback and yeah. and I got the puppet on my hand. Uh, I don't know where it is now, but no. But then something. they started buying you more elaborate puppets, right? Like they had yes. a little, a little yeah, more elaborate more puppets elaborate for this puppets. season. And then we burned the Buy shit out of them. Oh yeah, we got a bigger puppet budget. Uh, but that was the that was the uncomfortable thing, and and kind of we we have that moment in the episode. But like we bought these, we bought new ones, and then we had to really burn them and yeah. fuck them up, and it was and uncomfortable. Yeah, we, I felt like you were genuinely upset on those days where we were burning those puppets. Because it, it's just a waste of a puppet, man. But did you have to go and burn a perfectly new puppet? Hopefully they're being used, they're getting put to good use right now. Somewhere they got a job as a burnt puppet somewhere else, man, you know? We Start are, a puppet union. What, if, what would you do if you saw one uh, by the highway? <laughs> like in, with a cup? I give them everything I got, man. Okay. I would, give them everything them I got. Would you take them in? I, I no, nah, because I don't know where it's been, but I would like pull out some change. I, I would totally put change in this cup, for sure. I'm still looking forward to season five puppet episode, man. I know we gotta we gotta do the season five puppet episode. That was the the idea was that we would do a whole episode with us as puppets. So there's yeah. so the idea that I have, you know, I have I have a gigantic episode idea, idea log, and sometimes I'll take these ideas and I'll put my little twist on them just to, you know, as a creative person, you just start writing on. And I have yeah. that idea. It's like a whole episode of Puppets. We start off, but the, the kind of new twist I put on it was that like the cold open starts off with us as puppets. And then we reveal it's you doing a puppet show. And then we're oh, like, yeah. fuck this shit. We're not doing more puppets here. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> but because yeah. I, I mean, you know what? I love the idea, Marcus. Let's do a whole puppet episode. I know. I know. Obviously. 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 I, Every time, every time, I, like I, you know, I challenge Marcus an idea. All I can think of him is how many times he's picked me up, and hung me upside down. Yeah. And sh- and shaken the change out of my pockets. Yeah. Effortlessly. It's it's only because you deserve it in the moment, man. It's true. You know, in the moment. We and I put a lot of that stuff in the uh, gag reel. So as the season goes on, you're gonna see Marcus <laughs> hugging some people. Uh, there was one thing where uh, there's a one shot which is just fantastic where you turn Jamie Kaler upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and cut. You know, I actually remember um, last season um, in the pilot episode where we're going to, you know, the garage where we've got the, you know, the, the, the capuchin monkey and the mm-hmm. guy who's been hit in the head. Like, uh, we were all in our firefighter boots and we're supposed to be running. Oh, yeah. And I'm supposed to be in front. And all I know is <laughs> every every take, here comes Marcus from like two trucks back. Yeah. Flop, like going as, you're like, a big guy like that is not supposed to be able to move that fast. And he's like hurtling hedges. Yeah. And he's running in those big boots. I know. Yeah. He's, he's in the moment, man. And his son can kick my, son, yeah. my son's He's ass. method, man. His method. <laughs> um, you also uh, were lucky enough to get, you in a little hiatus. We got you to be in a movie with us, too. Oh right? man, and quasi. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. It's such a good movie, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Now we um you guys were great and uh uh it's so fun that the Tacoma people the Tacoma fans uh, you know love to see you guys in that movie. Exactly. It's like a crossover. It is. Which I think is super cool. You know what that is? That's the uh the uh Heffernan Lemmy verse right there. Is that what it is? Yeah, well because it's not like the Broken Lizard universe. It's our universe. Right. Right? Okay. Broken Lizard and Tacoma FD. Yeah. The nice thing is that these guys are so funny that in otherwise kind of like some serious moments or whatever, like we just cut to them and they have some funny shit that they say and it just it well, brightens Marcus, up the whole thing. Marcus and Eugene in the oh, crowd. Oh, so great. Marcus and Eugene in the yeah. crowd at the end. It's so good. Oh, 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 oh,
Um, <laughs> what uh, what were you, you were doing a play somewhere or something? Is that what you? Oh, were yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I went back to I went back to Yale. Classy, and you're I so did, classy. Uh, I, <laughs> and I did a play. Um, my my homegirl Christina Anderson wrote a beautiful play called The Ripple the Way that carried me home, and and it was so much fun going back home and doing that. What was it like doing some stage work again? I mean, it's been a while, probably, right? Or man, it's heavy lifting, dude. Yeah, it's heavy lifting. I, I think what it is is that you in in Hollywood, there's such a process that is just your own, and when you go somewhere and you have to do such a live thing, everybody is in on that process. It's not yeah. just it's not just you anymore. So it's 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 brought me back to a little bit of the roots, and which I'm which I'm really appreciative of, and uh, you know, I'm looking forward to like bringing that kind of stuff back to set of yeah. like, you know, yeah, man, this is, this is teamwork, man. This is what, this is what it's about. That's great. You know? are, are you going to try to do more stage stuff you think now, or are you, you know, I think so, that, man. I, you, you know, I, I find myself lately, um, I just produced, helped produce a, a short, um, I'm going to be directing a short at the oh, end of the summer. Yes. Uh, yes. So that's really fun. That's exciting. So I'm just trying to move into areas that, you know, that's just gonna stretch me a little more yeah uh give me a bit more of a challenge uh to to just express myself artistically yeah um and you know just finding new ways to do that i want to talk to director marcus i want to be on set i want to i want to shadow marcus i actually i wouldn't even shadow you i just want to sit off to the side with popcorn and watch marcus direct especially you you have so much fun you have no idea make that make it a puppet episode fifth season let me direct that you know what marcus uh, that sounds like a, a good idea. I'm going to come visit you on set, but I'm going to come after lunch. I, I, wanna, <laughs> I, I don't mind. Like the first half of the yeah. day is no, you can't judge a director in the first half of the day. I want to come in the second half of the During day. During the scramble? Half of the day. When time is running out. When the out. scramble's going on? Yeah. Time is running out and it's a million questions. <laughs> Time is running out, and actors right. are sleepy from, from Actors a, are sleepy. They don't want to do their job anymore. Your head's going to fucking, your head will pop with all the things in your head. Yeah, and yeah. everyone's tired. That's fucking can we right. go? Can we come to that set? I would <laughs> no. love that set. I mean, I'm, no. I'm hoping you guys would be showrunning that set, if I'm being honest. <laughs> oh, okay. Perhaps, perhaps. Then we will be there after lunch. Perhaps. Yeah. Wait, were you, you pitching, were you pitching us? Is that what you, when you were saying? Like, <laughs> I think I was. I think I did. It was it successful? <laughs> well, because then I felt bad because I, I was like, perhaps, perhaps, and you were like, perhaps, perhaps, and I was like, wait, did I just get pitched and pass? And does Marcus get <laughs> passed on his pitch? I didn't know. Nah. Because I don't listen. We've established he's stronger than me. His son's stronger than my That's son. That's correct. And I'm, I'm scared right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. All right, my man. Thank you very much. Man, thank you guys so much, man. It's such a funny first episode, good. and you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure the rest of the season is just going to follow up. It's and, a great and season, and you're so good in it. And there's also the, the hairdos and the fucking, you know, you're, you have a couple of failed loves in there. You got ukulele. <laughs> you got all kinds of good shit in there, and you're yeah. so great this season. I think you're really going to like it. So it's best season so far. I think it's so good. Yeah, it's so good. You're going to love it. Thank you, um, thank you. I appreciate that. But good talking, man. Um, All right, good talking to you guys. See you soon. I'll see you at the dojo. All right, love you, man. See you at the dojo. All right, y'all. Right. Peace. Oh, man, great segment. That was a great segment. I love that actor. <laughs> it's always nice having a guest. Yeah. Oh, my it? God. Guests make the world Do you think around. at some point we'll get guests in here, or do you think they want to come in here? I don't know. You know, do you think it smells in here? Do you think it smells like men in here? I think it smells now in here. Yeah. Like breath. You think so? Probably. Because of all those guys or us, just us? Us. Like, it's definitely warmer in here than when we started. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I also, like, we're very close to each other. Like, this is as close as I want to get to you. I kind of like being able to touch you, like, if I'm making a point, and I go, hey, let me, let me tell you something. Buddy. Yeah. I, you. See, I don't love that. Let me tell you something. I don't, I don't love that at all. You don't all. like that either? No, I don't like being poked okay. by your pen. What about, like, in the face? Never liked that. Never? Okay. No. I, I don't actually like this. You don't like that. I know you don't like that. That's no. why I do it. Um, all right, Lemmy. You know what else we got? A gag reel. Oh, thank you. We got a gag reel. Okay, everybody. And here comes... Technical consultant on that. 
So who's going to be the technical consultant on that show? Oh, it just so happened. <laughs> Whoa. Who's going to be the new technical consultant on that show? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Ready? Hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. Chief, hold sit on. down. Yeah, hold on a Sit down. Hold on a second, you guys. Ah. Getting over here, getting over the shoulder. Wait for your nice close Sit down. I'm, I'm trying to process this. I'm I know. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I just really want you to consider it. <laughs> <laughs> because Kavish is on. Oh, <laughs> I like the color, too. Sides? <laughs> First time of the season, guys. First time of the season. I'm turning green. It's happening, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. Gampy? Gampy, I'm talking to you. Quit laughing. You're crushing my feelings. <laughs> Granny, you're hurting me. We are here to connect with you in the afterlife. <laughs> Fuck y'all. He said for sure. For sure? <laughs> yeah, he said for sure. <laughs> Brilliant, my Yeah. Legend. You're the legend. Cap, is that Hugh Jackman's son? Yeah, Lou Jackman. I knew it was Lou Jackman. He's already huge in Australia. He was on that uh, show, Dr. Dingo. Wait, wasn't he at Muriel's Wedding? Muriel's Wedding, too. Muriel's Wedding, too. Electric Boogaloo with Ice-T and Judge Reinhold. That's right. Is that Mel Gibson's kid? Adolf? Yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that Paul Hogan from Crocodile Dundee's kid? Yeah, Gabriel Hogan. Though I told him he should shorten it to Gabe, it's a little bit tougher. Yeah. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> Great job. Good job, boss. I love gag reels. I love gag reels. I love bloopers. You know, people people complain about them sometimes. But it never gets old for me. No, I like to see people having fun. Well, I, you, everyone watches gag reels has a big smile on their face. Absolutely. And you know, the other thing is is you know what I find this season. You tell me if you disagree. Um, we've known each other now. This other cast, I and mean, we've known each other for a long time, but this cast we've become very close with now, and I feel like we're more comfortable, and then it, you have more laughs, more blooper laughs. Like, people were a little afraid in season one to, you know, cut loose a little bit, but like, yeah. you know, here, I think you get a lot of good laughs. Oh, absolutely. You know? Let me tell you, do you see that kiss I laid on you in that uh, I saw that, yeah. Gag reel? Well, I, I edited that gag reel, so yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you, you I watched put that? It in. I put it in specifically. Oh, you did that gag reel? I did, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, thanks, man. Hey, nice job. Thanks, bro. Um, I've got some skills. What, you don't like to shake my hand? Not yours. Why not shake it? They're wet. Why? It's they're, not wet. It's dry. It's wet. It's super dry. It's dry to you. Yeah, but why don't you try and see if it is? Because I already know. You don't know. Just give it a shot. Dry, right? It's, no, it's, oh, gross. I, why do I fall for it every time? So there's the gag reel. Okay, I loved it. I loved it. Um, you know, we'll have, a, we'll have one every week. Um, and it, there's, you know, and there's some, some deleted scenes. I mean, like, that, that scene uh, at the end there with, the, with James, the, the Australian guy, was a funny thing that we cut out. It was a deleted scene because uh, they come up and talk to you during the, uh, the on-set visit. And, you know, we thought, gosh, it got a little long. Listen, folks, when you make a TV show, you have to cut it down to 24 minutes. That's right. And sometimes you have to make tough choices. And you make a podcast... You got to cut it down to two hours. Like 30,000 hours. And that's where we are right now. Okay. Well, then with, with that, <laughs> let's with that end that being this said, should let's, we end it? Let's end it. That's the first uh, episode of season four, Talk Coma. Yeah. Talk Coma. Wow. We just blew the dust off. I know. I don't know. I think we'll get better. How do we do? Probably not. Um, okay. So tune in next week uh, for another episode of Talk Coma. And uh, we'll have new guests. And a new gag reel. A new gag reel. More gags. Good. And I'm going to touch you and point at you to next week, too. Okay. I mean, and, that works, right? That and, stuff? And I'll be impatient with you, yeah. and I'll call you out on your hypocrisies. Uh, okay. I love and it. And your double standards. I love it. We'll and see about uh, that. We'll more, see about that. more sex stories next we'll week. We'll see about that. Yeah. Talk on.